Yeah, it's a it's dog. Cute. Stray dog. No, that's not a stray dog, that's somebody. It's a stray dog. So we've got a few murals here. We're just walking down towards the old city. All these houses have been painted up. They're doing some work, so sorry about the noise. And here, this building here is uh, looking quite uh, in need of render. So the old city is just over there. There we go, coming around. You can see all the hills around, the mosques, on the banks of the river. This is Sarajevo City Hall coming into view now with a uh, illuminated sign that isn't illuminated right now. Sarajevo. Looking over to the old part of the city over there where we were last night. So just round from the City Hall and that bridge. There's a beautiful old Ottoman house and a minaret, and then this lovely old building. If we go closer, you can see where it uh, came under fire during the, um, the war. It's been absolutely hammered. Surprisingly, not rebuilt or patched up in all this time. So this is the House of Spite. So particularly stubborn Bosnian man said, mm, nah, you're not, you're not knocking down my house and building there to build your new city hall, which is just behind me. It's all the water coming down from the hills. And he said, nah, you've got to rebuild it brick by brick to put your city hall there. And then uh, you've got to give me a load of money as well. So they did. It's now a restaurant, it's well preserved, it's one of the sites in town. So we've got a bit of Berek here, spinach and cheese one, like we were having in uh, Albania. This one looks a bit nicer cooked, or a bit more cooked. Can't break open. It's almost like crispy. Hmm, uh, looks good. Give that a try, I think. So what do you think then? It doesn't taste like a pond and the cheese is very mild. Yeah, it's crispier, it's holding together better. Mm. It's nicely, quite a lot. nicely, um, nicely, nicely cooked, yeah. nicely stuffed, yeah. It's a little place down by the uh, city hall. We're just waiting for our Bosnian coffee. So here's our Bosnian coffee. So we can give it a stir. So it's a Turkish coffee, really. So it's cooked with the grounds and so on. So it's all served. I'll give it a stir. Then you have to pour it. So I'm going to switch hands. I heard you pour it over the sugar. Well, you can pour yours over the sugar. Or you can drop your sugar in and pour it over. No, I, I heard you pour it over the sugar. Where did you hear that? I was watching another YouTube video. Oh, let's see. So now you've got all over your fingers. It's sugar. Exactly. The ants, the ants will get you. Look those fingers. Mm. It's not one of those videos. You've got your own OnlyFans account. I'm stirring mine. Go on then. I think I'll put hairs on your chest. Yeah, that'll put more hairs on your chest, I mean. So it's got a little um, sort of copper rim there. Yeah. So that's because they do they do sand coffee around here as well. So what they do is they cook it in the sand. So you put that in there. So that'll transmit the heat without breaking the little um, little thing. Maybe I don't know. Any old copper place. And I found some pens, or Al spotted them actually. So little pens. Look. So just showing her the difference. See that's seven six two. These key rings are five five six. You see. So there's a difference. I said, look, there's a difference. One of them, take red off. Take you to pieces. Yet yeah, she just found that, look. look it's that. a tank. It's a tank, it's a tank. It's it's you learning. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> now that, if I'm not mistaken, it's made out of Kalashnikov rounds. 
762 by 39, it's 762 by 51. It's a lot short. Look at that weird thing it's done. Here you go, 50 cal and 556 for the aircraft. Yeah, good luck getting this on the plane. Pretty cool pens though. Quite like one of them. Well, come on. Something like, like a knife. Yeah, yeah. Sarajevo, like and here's shells. some shells. Yeah. Shell case there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, you got a bit of trench art. <laughs> yeah, that's Crazy. Yeah, exactly. Big ones there. Oh, yeah. That's like a full of the lead. Yeah. Do you put the cop around that? And no, then... we put the, we have the cop around when we put yeah. the lead in. Melt because lights have very low melting points. Yeah. You know, I repeat that similar story a hundred times. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> you should just record it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I'll have a look around. What's your name, sorry? Adnan. Adnan, Adnan Allison. Nice to Adam. meet you. Adam. 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 Beautiful old uh, Ottoman buildings. So this is the Coppersmith Street. Where. Doesn't look as good on video as it actually does, sort of like through, through real eyes, as it were. It's quite quite lovely. So this is Pigeon Square, apparently. Not sure why. A bit like Trafalgar Square in the old days. Here you go, you can buy a bit of bit of corn to feed them with. Dirty old rat things. On the fountain and the pigeons and the multiple mosques, you've also got teddy bears at the cafe, which I'm finding quite Bizarre, I must say. So that chap standing there in the middle, moving with his back to us, he's on the east west divide. So you've got the old Ottoman area, and then you go into a more European, Western European style. Um, a building. So we're going. This this street is a lot taller. All the buildings are far taller, far higher. Um, not quite grand architecture. And lots of friezes on the on the sides, and very different feel to it. So it's the east meets west kind of um, vibe to it. Lovely grand building, lovely turret. Leading up to the cathedral. Bit of a square. It's really grand buildings here, really grand architecture. This is the eternal flame. Some really lovely details on the buildings. You've just got to lift your head up a little bit. Lovely little reliefs on there. A bit uglier down here. A lot of traffic. But there we've got Veliki Park. We're going to next. Across the Veliki Park, I wasn't expecting this. This is this is Muslim graves, grave markers it's all over the place. So this is a bit of a cemetery. Um, what's this? One of the most heart-wrenching scenes of Srebrenica genocide against the innocent Bosniak population is the incident where a father, Ramo, calls out to his son Nermin to surrender, telling him that the Serbian soldiers purportedly won't do anything. Ramo and his son Nermin were found by an exhumation team in a mass grave near Srebrenica in 2008. That's 
what this statue signifies. There's a temporary exhibition here on the edge of the park. Lots of photographs of the Srebrenica massacre. So this is a memorial to the children killed during the siege of Sarajevo from 1992 to 1995, longest siege in modern history. And over here there's uh, memorial scrolls with the names of all the little children. So this is the first Sarajevo rose we've spotted. So this is where an artillery shell impacted and somebody was killed. So they fill in with uh, red and leave it as a memorial just in front of the Olympic symbol. Whoever was in that window was a target for some reason or other. So we cross the road on the corner of the park here, there's a big uh, sort of apartment building or something. So whoever was in this room was clearly being targeted for whatever reason I don't know. But that's, um, that's a lot of fire on that window space. We've walked for miles because Al wants to go up the Twist Tower. I don't know why she wants to go up the Twist Tower. Uh, it's not supposed to be twisted. They kind of cocked it up. It's supposed to be straight. But that's where we're going anyway. It's only taking us hours and hours and hours to walk here. We're at the base of the tower now. She goes, oh yeah, you get a lovely panoramic view of the city. Although it looks to me like we get a panoramic view of the rubbish part of the city. This place is not anywhere near as lovely as the other side. Where we were. It's a bit manky. Homeless people and derelict buildings and cranes and stuff. But we'll see. In the twist tower, we've taken the uh, lift up to the 35th floor. It's cost us... Um, five bam each, five marks each, which is around about four pound twenty. Um, so we've got a ticket to go up. Uh, let's go and have a look on the observatory. Very posh building. Turnstiles and there's video surveillance. So the pinnacle is 172 meters. We're below that. Um, you can see outside. Got telescopes you put money in. A little display of the building. This was voted as one of the top ten most beautiful buildings, apparently, by some Germans. There you go. And snow. Apparently for Winter Olympics. So here we go. Let's have a look. Uh, the view from the top is uh, quite expansive, as you'd imagine. Not as high as the surrounding hills, but I don't know how we'd get there, and you wouldn't want to walk up them. Um, sadly, we've chosen a misty day. But there's a large area of green down there. Now, I can't actually see for sure where we've come from. At the moment. There's the Holiday Inn. That yellow building there is a Holiday Inn. That's where all the... Um, journalists and reporters and uh, correspondents and that stayed during the Winter Olympics 1984 and again of course during the war when it was all kicking off here in the siege of Sarajevo. Holiday Inn is always a favoured destination like in Beirut and what have you. So that's that yellow and brown building there. But I've got a feeling we were over that direction there. That over there, that could be the bobsleigh track from the Winter Olympics, the fastest and the safest in the world, but that all got <laughs> smashed up by the Serbs. You can see all these hills, on all these hills and everything, during the siege, the uh, Serbian snipers were taking out Bosnians. Um, it's 
especially down Sniper Alley, as it was called. Just everything so so exposed. And you've seen from the, the pictures earlier or the videos earlier that I've taken, if you've watched them, that um, it's quite quite low buildings, certainly in the uh, Muslim quarter in the old city, the Ottoman area. Um, so you're really quite exposed to anything from above. Once you get into the larger buildings, you've got a bit more cover, but it's, yeah, pretty difficult to imagine that this was hell on earth only, what, 30 years ago. It's nice and quiet now. Calm, peaceful town. Really a joy to wander around. So I'm around the other side now. It's more open, it's more residential on these hills here. We've got the railway station below and uh, covered platforms and the lines coming in lots of uh, office buildings and tower blocks over there more hills in the distance so you can see it's really quite a hilly country so we're in this little rooftop terrace so what we've done is we've gone in and we've bought food you help yourself certain amount per kilo okay and then you come up to the roof bar you sit here and eat it. They also do cooking in there, and downstairs a little supermarket as well. With loads of birds around, loads of sparrows. It's lovely. Beautiful derelict buildings. There's lovely facades on them. It's gone to nothing. It's really quite sad. They're, they're really, really splendid buildings. You can still see um, shaped bullet holes and stuff like that on them as well, which is quite... quite... Um, Shocking, really. But it's just, just falling apart. So what happened? What's the history of this building? You know, why is it now empty and seemingly worth nothing when if we just cross over the road and look that way? There's massive, great modern buildings, loads of construction, but it's all, it's all sort of in various stages of redevelopment. We just walk along the river now. Quite nice. There's lots of bridges. So there's bridges there all along. It's popular just strolling along. More bridges over there as well. So this one is a Skenderaya bridge or something. There's a wooden bridge here, but now it's a metal one. This is a footbridge. So no driving over here. Oh, it's quite nice. Nice and pretty. A few flowers. There goes the tram. It's actually a really nice little city. I, I, I think it's really quite pleasant. This is quite nice. This is the Hot Wheels Bridge. So this is the Hot Wheels Bridge. What you do is you go run up. It's called the Hurry Slowly Bridge. What you do is you go running up here really fast and then you go, you jump over that wooden thing and you go up and over. Look at that, down there, like that, and you carry on. And look at that, it's the Academy of Fine Arts. It's amazing, isn't it? This is the Army Hall. Not sure what that means, might be a museum. Uh, certainly had the ship blasted out of it during the war. All those holes everywhere. You really wouldn't want to be standing anywhere near here. Nice little park here. A little bit green, so there's a memorial there. Again, it's May 1992. So, this appears to be the police. So this could be policemen who were killed in the Bosnia War. They're all date 92, 93, 95. There we go. Here we go, we've got a statue of some pigeons around a man who's come out and his small men playing, uh, playing chess. It's quite good, quite good that. I could be chess champion of uh, Sarajevo, like I am of um, a place in Albania. That must be quite difficult to see that. Don't know how you visualise that. Oh, look, he's got that. He took it. 
So we're just coming off the main thoroughfare and we're going to the Siege of Sarajevo Museum, just up here. And have a look and get an understanding, having walked around and sort of got a good idea of the layout of the city and where everything is and seen all the bullet marked places. So we're gonna we're gonna have a look at that one first, so it's just there. So here we are now at the Museum of Crimes Against Humanity and Genocide, 1992-95. So we're going to go and see it here. So this is all Srebrenica and what have you. So more happiness. Walking up the stairs, memory remains very true. Thank you. 